Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast, produced by the Small Biz Thoughts Technology Community, with your hosts, Amy Babinchek, James Kernan, and Carl Polichuk. We are dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. Hi, this is Carl. Welcome to another SMB Community Podcast. I'm joined today by Dortha Heiss, who is an amazing and spectacular virtual assistant. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. So we met, I probably at the speakers meet up in Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, right. <laughs> the Sacramento Folsom area is a shockingly small community. But anyway, uh, I follow you on LinkedIn. And, and so one day, I can't even remember what you posted, but you posted something about hiring a, a VA in these strange times we're in. And I thought, oh, man, that fits perfectly with all the questions I'm getting in my community. So uh, why don't you start by telling us what is a VA and specifically who are you and what do you do? Sure. Uh, so a virtual assistant is a VA and uh, not to be confused with the Veterans Administration, which happens for me a lot. <laughs> uh, and uh, a virtual assistant can do a wide variety of things for you from, you know, general front office stuff like something even like answering a phone or responding to emails, coordinating your schedule, booking travel, all those kinds of things you would tend to think of like a personal assistant for, all the way out through things like what we do for our, in, in my business and in my team, uh, we do a lot of tech related things. So integrating systems, streamlining and processing things like uh, getting regular blog posts, doing uh, regular newsletters, coordinating a uniform presence across social media, um, scheduling those social media posts. Uh, one of the things that we do here with my company is that uh, we really take like a high level approach with our clients. So we go all the way from strategy and like the 30,000 foot view down to get real granular and into planning. And then our team actually runs with that and then implements those pieces. So that's a little bit of how we're different um, than some VA companies. Um, we're not transactional. We tend to be very relationship oriented and we work with a lot of our clients for a number of years. Actually, I have a, a couple of clients who've been with me for, I think around 10 years. Wow. And, um, yeah, it's been pretty fun to grow and watch their businesses change and evolve over those years. And then of course this year with um, all the craziness that's happening, things have again taken another shift. So a lot of people, what we've been seeing is um, trying to figure out how to do their in-person things in an online capacity. So we've been helping people, you know, we've all probably been using Zoom forever, but they are like, how do I do this online? How can I have a face-to-face -face with a client or, you know, host my retreat or whatever in, a, in an online capacity? So that's been kind of a fun workaround and challenge that we've been helping our clients with these past, you know, four or five months. So you're actually having fun during the, uh, the quarantine here? Is that what you'd say? <laughs> Okay, maybe I'll use the term fun loosely. <laughs> okay. So, so a couple of things. One is the, the, I guess, social media focus. So you do a fair amount of managing people's social media. Mm -hmm. um, do you help them with their messaging or do you just say, whenever you do a blog post, we'll echo it out on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and all that? Mm -hmm. We have kind of a hybrid approach. So um, some of our clients really want us to just, they want to give us a bunch of content and we go through it and we'll, you know, pilfer out stuff to put into content for tweets and um, Facebook posts and LinkedIn articles and things like that. Um, other clients want to have more of a, okay, this is what I'm doing. Here's the topic for the month. Um, and then I want to repurpose these things in whatever different capacities that they they want to share it in the places that they are online. Um, one client that I work with in particular right now is an author. And one of the things that I've worked with him over the past, I'd say about six months, um, is taking his book and pulling content out from it. So it's literally words from him. I don't have to worry that it's not in his voice. And then I create graphics to go with that. And then I do the posts on his Facebook page. Primarily right now, that's the only place he has a presence. We're working on expanding it. But that's, that kind of gives you an idea of a little bit of a hybrid, as I mentioned, approach that we have. Right. So 
I work with a lot of technology consultants and it's amazing the number of people who have contacted me in the last six months to say, where do I start? Because hmm. uh, I always encourage people, your first hire should not be another technician. It should be either an administrative assistant in-house or a virtual assistant who can just take massive amounts of work away from you. And the, the one question that I get is, what do I have these people do? Because I'm afraid to hire somebody and then not have any work for them to do. Yep. Yep. That's one of the things I hear a lot. And, um, you know, primarily it's because a lot of entrepreneurs tend to be type A personalities. So we think, oh, we, you know, we can do it. I don't need to hand it off. And at some point in your business, you get to a point where you're not answering emails timely. You're not, um, <clears throat> things go sitting on your desk and collecting dust and, you know, not being attended to. You're missing maybe, you know, your kid's whatever game, um, you know, pre-pandemic, I guess, but um, you're missing important key meetings, those kinds of things. It's where you're, you have too many balls in the air that you're juggling. So one of the things that I tell clients, and I have a, a worksheet on my website that actually is a great tool for this, which is um, to write out a list of all the things that you do in your business. So from answering emails to meeting clients, um, prospecting for clients, attending networking meetings, all those things, and then <clears throat> go through and circle the things that only you can do, that only, you know, in your zone of genius that you can provide that service. Everything else can be outsourced. So once somebody looks at a list like that and they say, oh, okay, great. So now I know that, you know, like my social media can be something I could hand off. I may have to write it to start with so that the team starts to learn my voice, but I'm able to at least be able to, once I have it created, I can hand it off to someone and they can schedule it. So there's kind of a, a variety of things that people can hand off. And I think that newsletters and social media are the two kind of easy launch points for people um, because it's something that's easy to hand off. And if it's not going the way that you hoped or that you weren't intending, it's something that's easy to wrangle back in. Right. So w this whole concept of stuff only you can do, mm. I do have to say uh, the first five years of my business, 99% of everything I did fell into the category of stuff only I could do. Mm -hmm. And now if I take on a new venture, the first thing I do is figure out, okay, who can do this, who can do this, who can do this, <laughs> so that I do the fewest number of things of anybody, you know, on that project. Right. Because I, I think my perception now is there's very little that only I can do. Mm -hmm. there's, there's just a lot of stuff I'm unwilling to hand over whether that's finances or branding or whatever, you know, it takes some practice to yeah. learn that other people can actually do this stuff. Right. And I think there's an element of trust to it as well. Right. I mean, when you're first, it, I, I kind of make it a, a little bit of a joke, like, you know, you don't get married after a first date, right? Not generally anyway. So it takes a period of courting and a period of um, like, I like to call it learning the dance steps because for us as the virtual assistant, we are learning the dance steps that our client wants to have us follow. And then there is, you know, kind of a, a give and take period where we lead a little bit because we have to also finesse things from the client, right? Because they're not necessarily in a place where they're like, oh, here's all this stuff because they don't necessarily know what all quote unquote, this stuff that they need to hand off is going to be. So <clears throat> there's a, there's kind of a, a little bit of a dance. And I like to, when I start with a client, start off and recommend a trial period and say, you know, let's do this for 30 days and reevaluate and see how it's working on both sides. Or if it's something longer term, it might be 60 or 90 days. It just really depends. However, I really find that it's important to have those touch points because if the client isn't having their needs met and their expectations are at X and, you know, the team is performing at like, you know, W or something, <laughs> you want to make sure that you're having that meet in the middle ground and having those, hey, how's it going conversations are really helpful. And they also help to build that trust and rapport with that team. So I find that to be really important as well. And do you, 
schedule regular meetings even if things are going smoothly? I do, yeah. I find that um, when I get out of communication with clients, it makes it really hard for us to know slash anticipate what uh, the client is wanting so that when they come back and they're like, hey, we want to do whatever it is, we have a lot more questions because we have to get back up to speed to know what's going on in that client's business. Whereas even if we're not doing a ton of stuff, if there's still that touch point, even if it's like 10 minutes, just, hey, here's what's going on then it helps us to stay on the same page and we're not like falling behind and not knowing what's happening and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, regular communication is one of the key things. Cause you know, as a business owner, once again, I love to delegate and then I tend to abdicate, <laughs> you know, and, and, and not check in and not like just make sure everything is the way I want. And then, uh, you know, every once in a while I'll have a chat with one of my admins and, She's doing something that I, I wanted her to do for a week, but she's been doing it for six months. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that's something you can stop now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, but as, the, as that list of things grows, uh, it does give you a sense of, you know, I can give you more and more work because uh, you've done well with the other stuff. So then I can just ask, say, hey, would you be willing to do this? And very often the answer is absolutely. Right. Yeah. And we're a lot of times we'll ask, I mean, I know I do with my clients, Hey, have you ever thought about having us do this? And they may or may not have, but it at least plants a seed to let them know, Hey, they also know how to do this as well as uh, you know, the, the, what you were just saying about abdicating, it kind, of, it kind of puts it back in their court to say, okay, so when I'm ready for that, I can hand that off to them. And, and for the, I guess, what I call onboarding, <clears throat> when you take on a new client, uh, how do you get a sense of what their business is like? Like, what do you have an interview that you go through or to have them fill out questionnaires or, you know, what, how do you get started? I, I do. So when we first meet, um, you know, we have a, a Zoom session kind of like this and we just kind of have a chat about what's going on in their business, what's working, what's not working, where they're looking for support. And then um, when they agree, we send over a proposal. And then once that's accepted, I, I have an agreement. And part of that agreement process, there is a document that they fill out that lets us know a little bit more about them. So like things like, have you ever worked with a team before? <clears throat> How did that work for you? Um, some of those kinds of coaching questions where it helps us to know where their working style is, as well as how we need to step into the relationship. So some people are, um, they like to be led more. So we have to ask more questions and, you know, hey, where's this? Hey, where's that? We need to do a little bit more follow-up. Other clients are like, here's all the stuff. <laughs> Just please do it. So there's... It's, I haven't really found like a middle of the road so much. It really does seem to be those two extremes. That's interesting. Well, you know, some people start out their business with an admin or a VA and they just do it. And other people after literally 20 or 25 years start thinking, oh, maybe I really should give this a try, you know? So, <laughs> it, you know, it, yeah. everything's new and, and it's, it's interesting. So have you been... Uh, busier during the uh, pandemic? Yeah, strangely, I know it seems weird, but I'm hearing from clients who are like, oh my God, I don't have a website. This would be a great time to work on a website. So we've been doing strange projects like that, which, you know, is fine, uh, but random things that you wouldn't think people are working on right now. Kind of like when I drive around neighborhoods, I'm like, oh, lots of people are doing, you know, building a a fence on their house or they're um, digging up their yard and restarting and it just seems like kind of a weird time to be doing that like when things are very uncertain financially like would those be the things I spend money on hmm, I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> well it is interesting because I think a lot of people it's not even that they're not busy like they're crazy busy mm. but they do have these weird pockets where they used to maybe spend the time driving to work or spend the time driving to clients and so they're, they, they've somehow got a little extra uh, room in their day, I guess. Yeah. So um, what is your average engagement? Like, is it to start with the social media, build up a website, do some graphics? Do you have an average? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question. I would say a lot of people come to us 
um, for that consistency piece that I mentioned. Um, so we're helping them, you know, keep them on track doing a blog once a week, helping them, or maybe it's a podcast, or maybe it's they're starting a podcast, or it's starting um, a newsletter. So it's kind of some of those people that have, they have an audience, they have, you know, pretty big social media presence, and they haven't been leveraging it. So we really kind of help, I would say, in the two categories of newsletters and um, social media management and, and curation, because those are kind of the, the categories. And then from that, after we've worked together for a few months, a lot of people start to see, oh, these people are really good at what they do. Oh, like I am starting to see that there's more opportunity and potential for how they can leverage our talents and free them up for the things that, you know, is their zone of genius and the reason why they started their business in the first place. And do you think that uh, most people, um, come in a little reluctant to turn things over to you or do they come in <laughs> eager to turn things over to you? Oh, I think most of them are uh, reluctant. And I, I say that laughing because most people realize that they need support and they there's an element of like kind of a control thing that they, they want to give it up and they want to hold on to it. So right. there's there is that little bit of, you know, I want to give it to you, but it's my baby and I'm a little nervous to hand it over. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I mean, again, over the years, I've seen myself evolve. I used to be the one who had to approve the font on the envelopes. And, and now I'm like, you know, I couldn't care less. Like <laughs> you, you can't pay me to care what font is on the return address of an envelope. Um, but you know, I did make that evolution. And there was a time when I thought it was super important for my branding and, you know, uh, and maybe it is, and I'm just, I'm losing out. But <laughs> at some point, <laughs> your capacity is limited by how many times you personally are the bottleneck in your own company. And yeah. I think a VA uh, can absolutely help with that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's also part of the conversation when I onboard someone. I have a sheet that um, basically addresses when you become the bottleneck, what would you like us to do? Because it's almost inevitable. I hate to say that, but it is almost inevitable. So it helps me to um, be able to uh, coach through those situations, if you will, because uh, the question is something like, you know, if, if things get backed up and you're not prepared or you're not moving forward to the goal that you want to be working towards, how can I help support you? You know, would you like to use the time that we have scheduled for a call to have a brainstorming session to get a plan in place? Or would you like to immediately reschedule and then you'll get an action? So, you know, kind of some of those sorts of things help me to know what I'm what I'm dealing with. And then it also helps me to know how I'm best able to, you know, link arms with that client to help them succeed. So um, in general, is, would you say that your engagements are focused, uh, I guess, based on blocks of time or on specific tasks, right? So on the one hand, 10 hours a week versus uh, take care of my Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's pretty varied. I, um, I have clients that are on regular retainers and they have us do a variety of things. So it might be like the dollar amount equals out to like 20 hours in a month, for example. And for that time, we might have all their social media. We do a blog a week. Um, we do a newsletter a week. And then we proliferate and share things out onto social media. So it could be a kind of a variety. And um, to, to get this done, do I have you log into Facebook as me? If we're posting to your personal um, account, yes. If we're uh, to your personal page, rather. If we're doing things to your business page or to a group, we can generally manage that from like a scheduler. It's really up to the client. Um, I have a client that I do all of their posts as them. So I log into their account and I schedule posts as them in their groups. And then I have another client who um, doesn't use a scheduler yet. And we log into Facebook Creator to post to do posts for them. So, um, and then, you know, other clients who are like, here's the posts for the month, please schedule them in Hootsuite. So um, when you say a scheduler, you mean Hootsuite? Or yeah, something Hootsuite like or that? Buffer, or Meet Edgar, any one of those, yeah. So, uh, so do you, do you have like, 
thousands of these where you're like, oh, I got to log in as a different person in every one of them? Yeah, um, not thousands, but uh, you know, at any one time, probably somewhere around like 20. Right, so, so dozens. Uh, dozens. Personal uh, identity crisis, you know, logging in, wait, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that's what I wonder about, like all my blog posts show up on my, uh, my friend's website or whatever. So, um, and, and so how do you expand your services in the sense of if I hire you and I say, okay, here's social media, uh, maybe tune up my newsletter. Um, how do I know like there's some more stuff you could be doing for me? Generally, it's a conversation I bring up because I'm in your systems. So I'm able to see something that's not working quite as smoothly as it could be. So it might be something like, you know, you don't have an RSS feed set up to send out an automatic email every time you do a new, uh, a new blog post. And I might, you know, just send you an email and say, hey, this is something to consider, not something we have to address right now, just something for the future. Um, it also comes in the form of the client is ready to up level, maybe bring in a shopping cart or something like that. So they, they come to me and say, Hey, do you know anything about this kind of thing? Um, so those are kind of probably the two avenues that those conversations come up. And I'd say more often than not, it's me saying, Hey, the system, there's a, there's a way that we can make this smoother. Right. Um, and so, uh, in general, do people commit to, uh, three years at a time or <laughs> three weeks at a time or a block of hours or how, how do they get started? So it depends on the project that they're coming to me for. So like I'm working on a website for a client right now that's um, we've estimated to take three months because of their workflow and how they want to get it done. Um, <clears throat> so that I base I did a quote on a project basis. So we may continue to work together after the website is done and that will just depend on, you know, how they're feeling about other things they want us to take on. Whereas other clients, um, it, it starts out like month to month, really, to be honest with you. And, you know, as we build that relationship and they see that they're getting the value that they're paying for, they see the, the ROI, they can see more clients, that makes them more money, that kind of thing. So there, it's kind of a little bit of a spiral and not in a bad way. Right. So uh, let's take a, a quick break just to let people know how to get in touch with you what's your website and and uh you know how do they get this little starter document sure so uh, my website is pretty smart va services.com so um that's va like the veterans administration we talked about earlier but it's <laughs> virtual assistant so pretty smart va services.com and i have a link um, that I can grab for the free. Yeah, and, and we'll put the links down below in the description, so. Oh, great. Yeah, oh, yeah that's right. I forgot we were doing it. You know, you, my brain goes to like, just let's talk about the topic. I don't know how they're going to get the things. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do have, it's called a VA prep worksheet, and that uh, includes some uh, worksheets for you to think about things to ask a VA as you are starting to navigate this field of hiring someone to come in and support you and the things that you can hand off to them. So it'll, it'll give you somewhere to track logins because that's one of the big things that we find our clients don't always have is their logins to things. So that's one um, a discussion about a budget and thinking about that when you're hiring someone and then uh, some questions that you might ask a potential VA. So it's, it's pretty, you know, I think it's a pretty good sheet. I, yeah, I made it, but I feel like it's it's pretty thorough um, in what's in it. So that's also available. I have some other free resources that are on my website as well. Very cool. So um, I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but um, how can you, I guess, encourage people or, or help them to reduce their concern about hiring you? Um, you know, because people are like, ah, uh, I mean, it seems to me two, two obvious worries. One is it'll cost too much. The other one is um, it's, I, it'll be more work than it's worth. Mm. You know? Yeah, so um, I'd say there's a couple of things. One is um, I have a, a complimentary conversation with people, so I'm happy to have a conversation. Um, I've had many conversations where I talk to somebody and it's actually not the right time for them. And I'm, I'm okay with saying, you know, hey, look, this doesn't look like it's the right time or the right fit or 
whatever. And I also have a resources that if, if I'm not the right fit, I could refer someone to. I've been doing this a really long time, um, since long before it was cool to be a VA, since around like 2004. So I personally feel like um, my own personal experience in building my business has, it kind of speaks for itself. I'm not like a fly by night operation. I've been doing this a really long time. I can provide referrals and that sort of thing. So that can also be helpful. Um, as for the investment, I would say, uh, you know, and like, will it be worth it? Um, the, I think the thing that to me pops out is like the thing that it frees you up to do. So I, I've had clients be able to work on the book that they've been wanting to write, for example. And if they hadn't hired us and had us take on the things that were, you know, driving them crazy and taking up all their time, um, they wouldn't have had that. I don't want to call it free time because it's not really free time, but that extra time to be able to work on those other projects or to, you know, get more clients or whatever it might be with that extra time that they're getting. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned Zoom. So much of the world is like suddenly aware that we can connect remotely and see each other's screens and talk to each other. And, you know, it's like, uh, this is not new technology, right? <laughs> it's like, because yeah. like you said, 2004, I mean, there have been people who've been doing, not Zoom, obviously, but yeah. WebEx and GoToMeeting and everything else for a long, long time. So yeah. this, uh, this whole COVID thing actually hasn't changed your work environment at all. It's only changed the, the outside world that you have to do messaging to. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that my husband works from home now because he was working in an office. Ah. <laughs> that, that's also different, but it's been really great actually for us. So. All right. So you staying out of the way? He is. For the most part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the most part. <laughs> Very cool. So, all right. Uh, so folks can get in touch with you. They can download a uh, Get Started Worksheet. Is there anything else you would like to add to this before we finish? Uh, no, I'd say if you, um, I'm always happy to have a conversation. So if you're not sure the things that someone could help you with in your business, if we didn't touch on something here, I'm happy to have a conversation with you. There's a, a link on my website that you can book a complimentary call with me and I'll I'm happy to, you know, chat with you about your business style and what you do in your business, what you're thinking of having um, somebody do. And if I can maybe help kind of formulate a, a plan around that for you, I'm happy to do that. So any way that I can be of support, I'm happy to do that. Very cool. And does it matter what time zone? Uh, obviously, you're in California in the Pacific time zone. Um, mm -hmm. Nope. I have had clients all over the world from Australia to the UK. Um, and that a swath of time difference. Yeah, it hasn't really mattered. It makes sometimes cha uh, challenging when we schedule, but we figure out a way to make it work, so. <laughs> Very cool. All right, Dortha Heiss, thank you. I appreciate your time today. Thanks, Carl. This has been another SMB Community Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the SMB Community Podcast. If you found this useful, interesting, or fun, Please subscribe, share with your friends, and give us a thumbs up on your favorite social media. Please check out the show notes at smbcommunitypodcast.com and give us your feedback.